I took the cheapest AMD Ryzen-powered laptop that I could find, and I installed SteamOS on it. This is the ASUS VivoBook Go, and a few months ago I actually made a video on this. It was $219 over on Amazon, and since then I've actually seen it for around that same price in certain places, or open box at Best Buy for like $150 to $160, so definitely keep your eye out. But one thing to keep in mind here, it is a low-end laptop. I mean, it's the cheapest AMD Ryzen-powered laptop that I could get my hands on. And for a cheap laptop in Windows, it's not too bad for everyday normal use case scenarios. Browsing the web, checking email, video playback, even some light gaming is possible in Windows 11. But since then, I figured we'd go ahead and install official SteamOS on this. And yeah, it actually installed without a hitch using the Steam Deck recovery image that you can pick up over on their website. And this VivoBook Go is powered by the AMD Mendocino chip. It's actually the 7320U. So we've got four cores, eight threads, and only eight gigs of RAM. And that's really what's gonna hold us back when we wanna game on this. Having eight gigs for newer games just isn't gonna work out because it needs to share that system memory with the iGPU. And speaking of the iGPU, it's the AMD Radeon 610M. Up to 1900 megahertz in this, but we've only got two compute units. So to tell you the truth, I wasn't sure if this was gonna work or not. And with this, I didn't even need to use SteamOS 3.8. We're actually on an older version, just the Steam Deck recovery image from the official website. If we head into our settings, I'll show you exactly what we're working with here. System, move down, SteamOS hollow, 3.624. And of course, we've got that AMD Ryzen 3 7320U, four cores, eight threads, and the Radeon 610i GPU with two compute units. So it's the Mendocino chip, but what's really gonna hold us back here is our RAM. We've only got eight gigs here. If we had a little more, I'm sure we could actually get some other games up and running, but I did run into an issue where something like Street Fighter VI just uses too much RAM. As soon as I get into game, it will crash out on me. There's really nothing I can do about it. But I was able to get a bunch of games up and running and I uh, will be taking a look at that in just a second. But the first thing I wanted to kind of talk about here was just desktop mode. So we do have that here. And if I go to power, switch to desktop. And as you can see, we've got a full desktop just like we would on the Steam Deck. We've even got access to discover so from here, we could download different applications. We could go with GIMP, Photo Editor from games, uh, emulators. You can download all your standalone stuff if you wanted to, but I wanted to focus on PC gaming. Of course, web browser, and this is gonna work just like the Steam Deck would in desktop mode. You could get some work done. You could just launch games directly from here if you want to. But I really wanted to see if this chip could game in SteamOS. And with only 8 gigs of RAM, we will be a bit limited. But there's still a lot of stuff that I want to test. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Obviously, starting out light here with Hades 2, we're at 1080p medium settings. And I think I could probably take this up to high settings. When it comes to the TDP on this APU, in Windows it does up to 35 watts. It's a little hard to judge what it'll do here, but I think we're kind of right there at that limit. Now with this game, it doesn't need to pull 35 watts in total, and that's gonna be shared between the four core CPU and the iGPU, so keep that in mind. And I've seen the iGPU get close to around 18 watts all by itself, but to kind of put this into perspective for you, when it comes to the APU and the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, which we saw in the ROG Ally, the Ally X, and the Legion Go, that iGPU actually has 12 compute units as opposed to two that we have here with this unit. Kingdom Hearts 3, Birth by Sleep. I'm at low setting 720p and I was really hoping that we could hit 60 with it. Unfortunately, we're not at 60, but I'll tell you, I don't see any screen tearing. It feels pretty decent. If I didn't have that frame counter on, I really wouldn't suspect that we're at such a low frame rate in some areas, down to around 40 FPS in some cases, but it actually felt pretty smooth like this. Now, if I wanted to take the resolution up, to let's say 1080, we'd probably have to lock this down at 30 FPS. And even then, there's probably some areas where it might drop under. Again, I mean, we've got a very low end APU here, but with it set up like this, it actually feels way better than I thought it would.
with this one, I figured we'd see a much higher frame rate. I was kind of expecting around 60 FPS out of this at low setting 720p. But unfortunately, even with this one, I mean, we're right there in the 30s with it. And once we get a ton of enemies on screen, you'll see a dip below that. Now, if you take a look at the RAM usage, I think this is kind of what's holding us back here. There's two memory sections on screen. We've got our VRAM and we've also got the RAM. These are gonna be calculated separately. And if we add them together right now, that's eight gigs. So we're just maxed out here. But when moving over to a game like Left 4 Dead 2 or even Half-Life, you're going to see some pretty good performance here. Of course, they're easier to run games, and this little system just isn't putting out a lot of GPU power. Right now, we're at 1080 medium settings, 60 FPS. And I also tested this with an unlocked frame rate just to see what it would do. We got an average of around 82 FPS. I also went back to Half-Life 2. I didn't put it in the video because we knew it was going to run. If it runs this one, it's going to run Half-Life 2 even better. Medium, 1080, we can get an average of around 98 FPS out of that game. So this Mendocino chip is going to work great with these older games and indie games, but even if we had 16 gigs of RAM, I don't think we'd be able to do Cyberpunk 2077 at 60. There's a possibility we could do it at 720 low, 30 FPS, but unfortunately I couldn't even get the game started up because of the RAM. It would just crash out on me but I was able to start up The Witcher 3 at 720p low settings. Unfortunately, I lost sound with it. So I was really hoping that we could actually get this locked down at 30 FPS on this little chip. Unfortunately, in some areas you see it does drop well below 30. Another one I was pretty sure we'd be able to do at at least 30 FPS was Skyrim Special Edition. And when we boot this up in SteamOS, at least at the time of making this video, it's more of the Steam Deck version. So we don't have access to the settings or anything like that. You kind of get what you get. And the Steam Deck does put out more performance than this Mendocino chip. So if I could take this down to low, we could probably get it up to that 30 mark. Unfortunately, in SteamOS right now, even editing the config file doesn't seem to change the game settings. I kind of went down a list of games that, you know, perform well on the Steam Deck just to see how they do over here. And across the board, I mean, you can see that most of this indie stuff is going to run. Older games like Dirt 3, also 60 FPS, Stardew Valley, Celeste, Dave the Diver, Terraria. All of those are going to be fully playable on this setup right now. But when you move over to Cyberpunk 2077, Street Fighter 6, Marvel Rivals, I just couldn't get past the start screen with them. So these didn't finish. And going into this, I knew we were going to have trouble with the newer AAA games. I really just wanted to see what this would do and if it would install. And yeah, I mean, it's actually usable like this for indie games and older stuff. I wouldn't run out and buy one of these even at $150 to install SteamOS on. But since I already had one, I figured I could test it here. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Was really hoping for a little better performance here. But yeah, I mean, it's just a really low end chip. We've already kind of gauged what this thing can do, but if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.